growing one carrot, taking up time. Vodka in the bushes. Mm -hmm. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're returning. So here we are, this is Lovecraft Country, episode four, A History of Violence. We start out the episode, I'm like, okay, they're talking about the book. So last episode, Christina was telling Tick that the book is lost, but there's still some some scrolls out there. There are still a couple of missing pages that the uh, grandfather, great grandfather, had left. Why would Uncle George give his worse and behind brother that book? I knew Uncle George took the book because if you remember, the book was there on the table. Uncle George picked it up and was looking at it. So I had already known Uncle George took the book. But he was around Letty at the time that he passed away, and he was around his brother. Why would he give it to his brother? Because the one thing we know, if Tick can't count on anybody else to try to ruin his life, we can count on his father. He can absolutely count on his father to come through and make things horrible for him when he just doesn't even have to. I feel like his father goes out of his way to try to make sure that Tick suffers. And I don't know why he makes him suffer so bad, but it's probably because he knows it's not his real child. I don't even know what it feels like to have the woman that you love knowing that, you know, be with you're with her but you know that she was with your brother and then this care this child she's carrying is not yours so i think his father's dealing with all kinds of mental issues speaking of mental issues he's sitting up there and decided to set the damn book on fire i was like really this is what you do of all the things like he just could have hit the book and not even told tick that he had it but you set the book on fire Come to find out, Christina's the one that put them up in the Tales from the Crip house. I was like, okay, that makes all the sense in the world. So she thought she was just going to walk up in the house and do what she wanted to until, boom, hit that brick wall because Big Belly Beulah had already blessed the house. Christina's not getting through here. You, unless you are welcomed in, there is a force field that is stopping you. And whatever that field is, is stronger than what you have going on. So Christina just tells, uh, she tells Letty, uh, she needs the Ori. We go down to the shop and we see Hippolyta playing with this this uh, solar system, this like this gold solar system. And in my mind, I'm thinking this is the this is the Ori that Christine is looking for. But they didn't address that in this episode, so maybe going forward we'll see. This is what it was. So Tick and Hippolyta, hit Tick and um and um Letty are talking. So Letty's like, okay, Tick. You knew that Christine is the one that's behind this house. She's mad at him. So she tells Tick, which is very true, all this time you sit here wasting reading these books, you could have just talked to your father because everything that you think you're going to discover, he has already discovered. So apparently her, his father is an extremely smart man too, as disturbed as he may be. So they decide they're going to go on a trip. Hippoli uh, um, Tick, Letty, and the father. Hippolyta said, oh, no, you don't neither. Not in my car. Me and my daughter are going. Because last time y'all dipped up out of here, my husband didn't come back. And I know there's something there. So she jumps in the car. They're like, wait a minute. How's she going? Tick was like, what, what, what's she doing? He, her, his father said, listen, that's your auntie. I ain't got nothing to do with it. You tell her she can't go. So now Hippolyta and D are in the car with Tick and, and um, Letty and, her, and his father. Now, I know y'all don't want to hear it. But I'm going to just say it, unpopular opinions, if y'all sensitive, plug your ears for about three seconds, maybe five. Tink's father is the reason why Kanye made that dumb comment about slavery being a choice. I'm not saying that Kanye's right, Kanye's wrong. Kanye said what he said. It was a dumb thing to say at a, at a stupid time. But look at how against tick tick's father is tick's father is is his worst that's like anything that tick could do right his father's gonna make sure to come in and thwart those plans it's just like that was his job it's his job to ruin his son's future and it's people like that that hold other people back and they're just so good at it so uh that's my unpopular opinion i don't know tell me if y'all agree don't agree you can comment down below how you feel i know it was irresponsible for kanye to say it but people like that are the reason why Kanye said what he said. Moving on. So Auntie said, if I'm not riding, ain't nobody riding. She hops in the car. Christine is across town with the with the police captain. And apparently they know each other. He like, what you doing in my town without notifying me? Why are you here? So they don't like her. They got a secret society going, a thing going. They all know about the house. 
it's a lot and it seems like the people that are in charge know all the secrets but they're all missing a piece and the piece that they're missing is the one piece that tick has access to in a way that they couldn't christina wishes that she could but she's not a man so we go down to the museum and they said that titus braithwaite was given all these artifacts as a thank you from from the the natives because he taught the savages the ways of civilized people oh is that what we're calling it so in other words he went down there and captured all these slaves i think they said from haiti uh stole all they all their their riches brought them back and made them work for him so is that that's how he was able to teach the savages how to behave as civilized men moving on what I love is how smart Hippolyta and Uncle George uh, were. Well, George has passed away now. So I love how smart they are. They're just a, a powerful, black, strong, smart couple. And they're raising Dee and they're, they're teaching her to dream. And I see that same thing in Tick. And unfortunately, his father seems to have a substance abuse issue. But I see it in the father as well. I really like this show, y'all. I really do. Uh, y'all let me know what y'all think so far. And while you at it... Can y'all smash that thumbs up for me, please? Or thumbs me down and let me know what you don't like about the show or my, my commentary or whatever is going on. But thumbs me up because the thumbs ups and the engagements really help me out on this channel. But moving on. So they decide to go ahead and sneak back into the museum. They're going to get to the bottom of this Titus Braithwaite mess. They're all going down the road. I'm like, okay, it's cool. Everybody's going down the rope. Did y'all see granddad struggling down the rope? I said, now, if his old ass can't get down that rope, ain't no way in the world he's going to be able to climb back up. I don't know how they're going to get back up, but it better not be through that rope because it's game over. Little do we know, the rope wouldn't even be an option because once they got over there to the plank, the thing started to disintegrate. It's like this show is like Tomb Raider slash... Um, uh, guess who slash you know it was it was Letty in the courtyard with the candlestick and you know it's just it's I love this show there's just so many different ways that they go and then I like how they make it unbelievable but then it's still believable and they touch on the supernatural but it's still natural y'all did a good job with this one anyway I think that it was a great idea to send Letty over because she was the smallest one and if something did happen, George could, you know, snatch her back. But if he pulled that rope and she was swinging, she's going to smack right into them rocks. So I don't know what, what, but okay. So what caught me off guard is how did Christina live? But we know she's into witchcraft or whatever it is. So we know how she was able to make it out when the house crumbled. But her concubine made it out too. So something tells me he's like Christina in different form, but maybe not. So the concubine is up there kicking it with the sister. I forgot the sister's name, y'all. Drop down and remind me because I, I, I don't forget it. But he was up there kicking it with the sister. And I said, oh, this is his way in the house. They get into the house because she's like, oh, you ain't going to get it, white boy. But then she wanted to give it to the white boy. So they get to the house. She cut her hand. And he like put it in his mouth and I was like, ooh, now they got access to her blood. I don't know if they're going to use that to get through the force field on the door. I don't know what is going to happen, but something tells me that that cut wasn't an accident and him putting it in his mouth was not no erotic vampirism, you know, vampirism type mess. It was really, he did that because he needed her blood for whatever reason. And I think it was Chris, well, because Christina sent him there. And speaking of that, the way he was even able to get in is because the sister was sitting there mad at Letty talking about, you know, it's Letty's fault that she didn't go down and apply for the job at the department store. Letty's the one that told her, you need to go down there. And she was like, nope, you need to go get a job uptown. Letty was like, no, they holly, they're hiring colors at the department store. Go down there and get a job. I'm going to go down here and get a job. So how are you mad at your sister because you allowed yourself to be distracted, which really she wasn't even distracted. It was her own self-esteem and her not thinking that she was good enough for that or that it wasn't even a possibility then when she went down there she saw that it was a possibility and had she gotten her over her own nerves she would have went down there before him but don't blame letty in this one because it's the one time that i think letty didn't do what people are trying to say she did she's the one time letty was right but that was what christina's concubine was able to use to play off the sister's emotions so now she don't let the she don't let the the fox in the hen house but anyway we go back over there with Letty and them. So the, the, the bridge is starting to disintegrate. And Pops knows the key to the code to get in because he read it in the book. 
all of a sudden you can remember the code the uh the password to get you know the to get through the door so that all y'all don't die on this plank but you forgot to tell your son that you the one that burned the book in the first place and he wouldn't even have to do this had you just gave him that book it's okay because fast forward a little bit tick winds up figuring it out anyway i don't know how he was smart enough to put two and two together but he definitely did I won't even go there with all the crazy that occurred after they got through <laughs> that door and the plank had disintegrated. But how in the world did the father think that the best move was to slice that woman's throat? How, where did that come from? Why was that what he chose to do? So it only leads me to believe he read more of that book than what we saw. We saw him open up the first page I think he read that book and I think he knows all of what's in that book and something tells him that he had to get rid of her because he's not possessed. We know the eyeballs change when you're possessed and maybe sometimes the voice or your mannerisms. He's not possessed. Why would he do that to that woman? Because that was the key. But here's the thing. With the way Tick is rolling, Tick has things in him that he doesn't even know. I said this last episode. Tick doesn't need her to translate those scrolls. He doesn't need her to translate anything. And speaking of scrolls, I thought that was so dope how Letty swam outside of the uh, elevator and went and got the scroll. Because all of this would have been for naught had she not done that. So she went and got it, goes back in. Now they got the scroll. Tick doesn't need that woman to translate because he was able to communicate with her in a language he didn't even know he understood. No one knew that he understood it or could speak it. Now it's just a matter of learning to read it and interpret it. I think he's going to be just fine. But why did dad eliminate that woman? Once again, anything that he can do to go against his son, it seems like that's the path he's going to be on. Now we're moving on to next week and I saw the little, little clips, little previews. I'm confused. It looked like Christina's concubine was carrying Letty, but it can't be Letty because Letty's an integral part of this whole what we got going on over here. So they're not going to get rid of her yet. They tried and they brought her back, so she ain't gone yet. But who was he carrying? It definitely wasn't the sister because she's dark skinned and she's a big girl. He was carrying a little bitty chick and it looked like she, she was white, but she wasn't white enough. So I thought it was Letty. But then you see him bludgeoning her inside of the inside of the uh, the dining room with the candlestick or the vase or whatever it is. So I was like, okay, it's not Letty. Who was that on the ground that he was going to work on? Anyway, y'all make sure you have subscribed to my channel if um you haven't already. Thumbs me up. I'll wait. And let's do this again next week. Y'all comment down below. What am I missing? I'm confused. Who was the woman that Christina's concubine was carrying? And do y'all think that the father read all of that book? Because I think he read way more than that first page that we saw before he lit that thing on fire. Or it's going to come out that he put the fire out and snatched the book out. And he has the book. So all of what they did was just a waste. I don't know. Like I said, make sure you guys thumbs me up. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel. Let's do this again next week.